Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church, Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master. Thank you so much for joining us as we continue our study of the book of Revelation, a special book, a special blessing. A special blessing is promised for those who honor the book, hear the book, heed the book of Revelation. It's not a book of mystery to be concealed, it's a book of blessings that have been revealed. Now, we discovered yesterday that the book of Revelation has basically four sections in it. We looked at two of those sections yesterday. The first section is the vision of God. When people are being persecuted, going through any type of suffering, you need a heightened, a heightened view of God. So the vision of God who is ruling and who is in control. Then we saw the second book, uh, section of the book of Revelation is the vision of grace. John is writing to the seven churches of Asia who have not been as faithful as they should have been with the exception of one church, the church of Philadelphia, the seven churches. And now we move to the third section in the book of Revelation, which is a vision of government, which is really what the whole book of Revelation is about. It's a, it's a conflict between, if I could just simplify, simplify it, between the Democrats and Republicans. That's what the book of Revelation is about. It's a conflict between those who want to practice kingdom ethics and those who want to practice uh, empire ethics. Now, don't mishear me. I'm not saying that the Democrats believe in kingdom ethics all the time. And I'm not saying that the, that the Republicans believe in um, empire ethics. But what I am saying is that I can tell you whether or not you are a Christian based on the book of Revelation, based on whether or not you believe that it is acceptable to have a big gap economically between the wealth, between the, the, the rich and the poor. If you believe that, you're empire. If you believe what Jesus taught us to pray, that everyone should have daily bread, that they should have their needs met. John would later say in his epistle that, uh, you know, John 3.16, but 1 John 3.16 says, that if you have these worlds, the world's goods, and you see your brother in need, and you close up the, the your your compassion against that brother, he says the love of God does not dwell in you. So you know it, it, there's a conflict between two types of government. One type of government creates war. One type of government creates poverty. Another type of government says, you know what? Those who have the most should be taxed so that there's more of an equal distribution of opportunities and a more equitable distribution of wealth. That's what the book of Revelation is really all about. The substance of the book is what type of government is pleasing with God. That's it. It's not that deep. Now, because Christians want the government that Christ teaches and that the empire of Domitian and Rome is counter to this government, Christians were being persecuted. The, the more faithful you are, the more persecution that you experience. In the book of Revelation, I told you that number seven is important. John, who is on the Isle of Patmos, who's faithful, who's on, on the prison island because he's been faithful to Jesus Christ, has these visions. And one of the visions he has is he's been taken up to heaven. And up in heaven, what he sees is he sees God on the throne. Jesus is ruling. Now, in the book of Revelation, Jesus has a book in his hand. He's called the Lamb. And the book is how is God's plan to conquer government that oppresses people, um, a government that uses a police state to, uh, to shoot down with impunity uh, black men. This is what the book of Revelation is really all about. It's about government oppression. And the Christians who are being oppressed want to know, God, what are you going to do about this? And Jesus has a book in his hand, and nobody can open the book. But, but guess what? The book gets opened because the book has seven, remember that number seven again, seven seals. And every time a seal is open, well, it, it's, a, it's another, every time a seal is open, there's something that has to do with the evil that human beings are causing in the world. It's called the seven seals, the seven seals. So the seven seals means, check this out, 
that the world is ruined by man. It's the seven seals of judgment. And he opened up another seal and then something else happens. Then he opens up a second seal. He opens up seven. He's pulling back the seal so the book can be opened, which has God's plan and God's purpose. Then there's seven trumpets. And if the world is ruined by man, the world is ruled by Satan. So we're so those who are creating um, police terrorism, uh, police abuse, those who uh, create government of mass incarceration, the, the, the mastermind behind this is Satan who's going to be defeated. So the world is ruined by man. The world is ruled by Satan. But guess what? The world ruined by man, ruled by Satan is the world that is also rescued by God because he is the seven horned lamb. Now, let's look at, first of all, the world that's ruined by man. Let's look at that. That's when the seals, remember the seven seals, and we're going to look at it. Here are the seven seals. And every time the seals, our seal is open, something happens. The first seal is the seal of domination. It has to do with the white Horse. A seal is going to be open. Here comes a white horse. Remember in the color codes, go back to your color codes, that the word white means conquering. Conquering, so domination. The Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. I watched as the Lamb opened first of the seven seals. That was the, the book is in the hand of God. The Lamb takes the book, and he, he's the only one worthy to tell us what's going on. The seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures, the four living creatures. Remember four, don't mean four, go back to your your numbers, always go back to your numbers. Four means creation. I heard something that God had created say in a voice like thunder, come look. I saw there, I, and there before me was a white horse. Remember white means, what does white mean? White means conquering. Domination. I saw someone dominating. His rider had a bowl and he was given a crown and he rode out as a conqueror, bent to conquer, conquer, domination. Now, notice what he's talking about here is how Rome is trying to conquer the world. That's what this is really all about. But notice what the rider has in his hand. It says in verse two, he has a bow in his hand. But what does it? He doesn't say he had an arrow. He doesn't have an arrow. He just has a bow. And a bow without an arrow is ineffective. In other words, what he is saying is this, this empire, Domitian, that's trying to conquer the world, um, has a bow, which means, but it doesn't have an arrow, which means it's more bluff than battle. Jesus is still in control. So domination. And then look at the second seal. The second seal, first the white horse, then there's a red horse. And the red horse means division. Verses three to four, notice what it says. When the lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second, second living creature say, come. Then another horse came out, a fiery red one. And remember what, what, what red is, that in our color code, red is warfare. Then another horse came out, a fiery red one. Its riders was given power to take peace from the earth and make people kill each other. Warfare. Remember your color codes I gave you? I see, look at number. The color red means warfare. So what you have here is a horse that's representing division, division, racial division. Take peace from the earth to make people kill each other, which is what's taking place in the United States of America today. If anybody asks you what's happening in America today, just tell them it's the riding of the red horse. And then you've got uh, the black horse, look at uh, chapter six, the black horse, verse five. Remember what black means. Then your color code, the word black means famine. Well, let's see if it's a famine. And I gave you these color codes several days ago. I hope you have them. It says, when the lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, come. I looked and there before me was a black horse. It was, it, it was a, its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Don't actually see a horse. Don't see a horse. He's using coded language. If I say the woman is a fox, don't see a fox. Just see a beautiful woman. If I if 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 you say um, that um, she's a brick house, don't see a wall. See a beautiful woman. All right. When I say black horse, don't see a horse. 
know what the code means. I looked and before me, there was a black horse. His riders were holding a pair of scales in his hands. So we know we're dealing with economics, scales. Then I heard what sounded like the voice of among the four living creatures say two pounds of wheat for a day's wage and six pounds of barley for a day's wage and do no damage and do not damage the oil and wine. What is he talking about here? He's talking about depression. He said uh, two pounds of wheat. That's not a lot of wheat for a day's wage. You usually ate up two pounds a day. A man ate up two pounds a day. What is he saying? If you got uh, two pounds a day, which is only enough to feed one man, that means that I work a day's wage and I don't have enough money to take care of my family. That's what this is talking about. I'm talking about economics because the kingdom of God does not like to see the division between the, the, the haves and the have not that we have in our society. And what is messing this up, what is ruining the world is man and his economic systems. This is what this is saying. So you, you have a red horse, which is division and war. You got a white horse, it's domination. You got a black horse, which is economic depression. You can feed yourself, work all day, can feed yourself, but don't have enough to feed your family. And then you got a pale horse. Verse six and seven, uh, verse seven, excuse me, and eight, the pale horse, which means destruction. It says, when the lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the voice of the fourth living creature say, come. I looked and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death and Hades and falling close behind. They were given the power over the fourth and the earth to kill by sword and famine and plague and by the wild beast. My God, by the wild beast. Now, listen, what this is saying, my brothers and sisters, is this, is that uh, whenever you've got domination and whenever you've got division and war and economic depression, that you're going to have a kill by, so you're going to have wars, you can not you have famine, whether it's in plagues like we're dealing with today, uh, 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 and, and the wild beasts are not literal beasts, but these are the people who control the system. They're called the wild beasts. So what you have in the book of Revelation with all these codes is really a world that is dis it's describing our kind of world. But let's move on. You saw uh, the first seal, the second seal, the third seal, the fourth seal. Now let's move to the fifth seal. The fifth seal, verses 9 and 11. Notice what it says. The fifth seal. And remember, God has a book in his hand. It has seven seals on it. The book is the book about God's plan and purposes. And everybody's wanting to know, God, what's the plan? What's the purpose in the midst of all this hell that we're going through? And nobody was worthy to take the scroll out of the hand of God except the seven horned lamb. That's Jesus Christ. He's worthy. The word worthy means worship. We worship him because he's worthy. And he he pulls back the seals. And every time he pulls back the seal, you get a a more revelation, more insight. And, and when it comes to insight, by the way, you don't get your insight instantly. You get your insight you, uh, 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 incrementally. You don't get it instantly. You know, one seal is open, second seal is open, third seal is open, fourth seal is open, fifth seal, sixth, seventh seal. You don't get it instantly. And even in your life today, you don't, you don't know now. You don't know today. You don't know uh, uh, two years ago what you know now. You've got more insight, more revelation. More, it makes things are starting to make sense. More seals are being pulled back. It says, when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who were slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. And the key word is maintained. That's discrimination versus the, the fifth seal is about discrimination. Those who would not capitulate, those who, who would not sell out. You know, you always got brothers and sisters who work on in, in corporations and company in corporate America, instead of being down and, and grounded with suffering people, oppressed people and black people, some of these same, uh, you know, boot licking type of brothers and sisters will sell out. And if you don't sell out, you won't get the raise, you won't get the promotion, you might get fired. Well, guess what? You've got these Christians who would not sell out. They, these Christians were like Malcolm X. They were like Fannie Lou Hamer. This is what this is all about. And so, uh, so they were suffering discrimination. That's what the fifth seal is about. But look at the sixth seal. I watched as he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made, the, like, made of goat hair, and the whole moon turned blood red. Guess what? 
Jesus is going to fight back. So you got you got domination. You've got the, the, the government's trying to dominate. The government uh, is engaging in racial injustice. That's the red horse. The government is in, engaging in uh, an economic system in which you don't have enough to feed your family. Uh, the government is engaging in a pale horse, which is war, hunger, and disease. The government is engaging in discrimination for those who are maintaining the faithfulness. And the lamb says, I'm going to defend you. And the lamb is going to defend you because the lamb controls everything. And he defends them. And, and nature is starting to get involved. And nature is saying, I'm going to fight on behalf of the lamb. And then the sixth seal, the, the seventh seal is deliverance. Deliverance. Chapter 8, verses 1 through 5. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for a half an hour, and I saw a se saw the seven angels. Remember, seven is an important number. Who stand before God. The seven trumpets were given to them. Another angel who, and the trumpet's going to sound. Oh, here comes God. The, another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all God's people. So they've been praying to God because they've been suffering. The smoke of the incense... Uh, together with the prayers of God's people, went up before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire uh, and, and the, uh, from the altar, hurled it on earth, and there came peals of thunder, ramblings, of fl ram rumblings, flashes of lightning, and earthquake. In other words, here comes the lamb and who is going. And, 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 and a lot of this, there was a, a famous uh, volcano, Mount Vesuvius. And Mount Vesuvius, when it erupted in Pompeii, this is all that's going on. People saw that as the judgment of God, that the lamb is coming out against the empire. So you've got, you've got, the, the, here, are, here are the, 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 the words, here are the seven words, domination, division, depression, destruction, discrimination. Those are the five evils of man, of, of, of man. but here comes the defense, the lamb and here comes the deliverance that the, that the lamb is going. But this is basically saying in coded language to people who are faithful to Jesus Christ is that the lamb's going to win. That's what it's saying, that that God's going to fix this sick, crazy world where you have this great division between the haves and the have nots, where you have poor schools and poor communities and the absence of good health care and mass incarceration and those who are the victims of it, uh, God says, don't worry, I'm going to fix this world. I'm in control. God is in control. And that's what we must remember and that we're supposed to be faithful to God in the midst of this. This is how the book of Revelation should be interpreted because remember, you always interpret the book of Revelation, any book in the Bible. This is just basic Bible hermeneutics by asking the questions, Who's the author? Who's the audience? What's the alarm? What are the answers? And then once you discover that, then you say, now what are the parallels between what's happening in the book of Revelation and what's happening in our own world? And there are so many parallels. And the reason why the book of Revelation is not interpreted like this is because we've been reading the book of Revelation through the lenses of those who have power. Most preachers have gone to seminaries, even you're a black preacher, have gone to seminaries that are dominated by whites. So if you're a black preacher like I am, or you're an oppressed part of an oppressed group, you don't write the books. Those in power write the books and they always interpret the Bible in a way that's going to keep them in power. So therefore, many of you will hear what I'm saying to you about the book of Revelation. And you, some of you will say, well, th this isn't how, what I thought the book of Revelation is. Well, that's because you have been brainwashed not to see what's really going on because uh, they don't want to share the wealth. They, they, they don't want you to see get you get mo put money in your pockets. But brothers and sisters, this is the this is what's going on in the book of Revelation. And the reason why it's timeless is because you will always have empire. Those who want to be in domination and control and conquer and rule and have all the wealth, all the privileges, all the power. And you always have the oppressed, the oppressed groups. And what the book of Revelation is, it is good news for those who are suffering. So if the gospel of John is about how God saves and if God is going to save you and the epistles of John are designed to, to help conf confirm 
us in our faith in the book of Revelation is designed to comfort us in our faith because we're being loyal to Jesus Christ and we don't care if people don't like us, people get mad at us. You know, if we get arrested, we get killed like Martin Luther King or Malcolm X. If we get jailed like Nelson Mandela, it does not matter. If we get executed like that, that wonderful brother, uh, the white brother, John Brown, it does not matter that we're supposed to be faithful to justice. This is what the book of Revelation is all about. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Bless your people today. Help us be faithful uh, in our day as John was faithful in his day on the Isle of Patmos. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us uh, today. If you don't have a church home, look, we'd love to have you become a part of St. Stephen Church. Email us, we will get back with you. St. Stephen Church, email us, newstart at ssclive.org. God bless you. Have a blessed day. We'll pick up on this tomorrow, but until then, you have a blessed day. And don't forget to, during COVID-19, to stay safe, stay sane if you can, stay home. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.